Nine minutes now past eight. Welcome to Saturday Breakfast with me, Donna. And the man hoping to continue as the Labour Party leader in the autumn is in Cornwall later today. Jeremy Corbyn will be at a rally in Poole where he'll be pushing his message for why he believes he is the man to lead Labour to victory. The incumbent leader is being challenged for the post by former Shadow Work and Pension Secretary Owen Smith. And the leadership contest, of course, follows weeks of turmoil when Mr Corbyn lost the support of the majority of his parliamentary party. Well, Mr Corbyn is on the line now. Good morning to you. Good morning. Good How morning. I'm very good. Thank you very much indeed for joining us. It's not the first visit you're making to Cornwall in recent weeks, is it? No, not at all. I was there during the uh, referendum campaign and we had a wonderful morning on Perrinporth Beach uh, talking to people there and talking about issues of um, local business and trade and, of course, uh, the way in which the beaches have been cleaned up. And I was complimenting surfers against sewage for their work. And then we had a great event in Newquay uh, later on that day when a large number of people came. We had a very good rally there about the case for remaining in the EU, which of course was uh, not the result we wanted. But nevertheless, there are big infrastructure issues and spending issues that have got to be faced in the southwest. Well, absolutely there are. And just on that point, I mean, you recently unveiled a 10-point plan to rebuild and transform Britain, full employment, a million new homes in five years. But there are many in your party, Bren Bradshaw, for example, who we heard of uh, about an hour or so ago, who say you are not the right man who can unite the party behind those reforms and effectively make it happen. Well, in the past year, we've managed to turn the whole debate around on austerity, so people now begin to realize that the way out of any economic difficulties is actually invest, not cut, and we have defeated the government on a number of occasions in Parliament, so I think we've actually achieved quite a lot, and we've also increased our party membership enormously across the whole of the out of the UK, um, nowhere more so than actually in the South West, where the, there's been a very big increase in membership in Devon and Cornwall. Well, it's interesting on that point then, isn't it? Because we only have one Labour MP for the whole of the South West. So do you think in the past the Labour Party have let down the electorate because they're not voting for Labour? Well, we obviously have to win support back and we have to win support back on dealing with the issues that face the region, one of which, of course, is the need for uh, much better investment, particularly in the rail system for the South West. It's still far too slow to get from Exeter down to Penzance. But it's also the question of jobs and the quality of jobs and the levels of wages and, crucially, the housing issue. And I'm very interested and impressed with what St Ives is doing, for example, in trying to provide um, homes for people who, local people who desperately need them. Yes. Uh, just on the, uh, the point of that sort of wealth inequality, in a way, that's one of your other pledges, isn't it? To cut the income and wealth inequality. We see it so much here in Cornwall, particularly. It's at the root of so much poverty here. Um, so what do you think you can say to people in Cornwall to convince them yeah. to vote for you next time around? What will be different? How can you help them? It's the lowest wages in the UK are in uh, Devon and Cornwall partly because of uh, seasonal work in the tourist industry, but also the lack of investment in developing new industries because the uh, distances are so high and the journey time so slow to get anywhere. And so it's also about a minimum wage that means something, uh, a much higher minimum wage. It also means nationally a, a level of taxation at corporate level that isn't cut, but in fact is uh, maintained at the current level or increased in order to pay for the infrastructure we need. We're proposing a very well-funded national investment bank to help deal with the issues, not just of infrastructure, but also, of course, of housing. Yes. Do you think Cornwall, in a way, does get overlooked in the South West by, by many policies? I mean, we've seen such a huge growth in the food banks, for example, in recent years. Uh, absolutely. The, uh, Cornwall is too often presented across the whole country as a sort of... Uh, seaside idyll, which is a truly really wonderful place to visit, and it is a truly wonderful place to visit. Indeed, my mother's family come from the southwest, and uh, it, or, or it's got this presentation of what a beautiful place it is, and it is a beautiful place, but there are, of course, enormous problems of poverty, particularly rural poverty, and uh, this is exacerbated on housing issues, exacerbated on uh, insufficient bus services and uh, isolation of rural communities.
Yes, I'd like to ask you a little bit about Theresa May's first speech as Prime Minister, if I may, because uh, many commentators said it borrowed much from the traditional old Labour values in terms of human rights and social justice. Are you maybe slightly concerned that the new Prime Minister is perhaps, you know, reclaiming some of those old values from Labour? Well, it's quite interesting. The language she used was one thing. The problem was the following day she... Uh, uh, unveiled, or his her government unveiled, a new higher education bill, which actually lifts the cap on student fees and uh, removes, finally, this government has now removed all um, maintenance grants for any students. So they've actually closed off access to university standard education for a, another generation. And so the deeds are not matched by the words that she uttered on the steps of Downing Street. OK, but in fact, many people will say that, you know, the infighting about the uh, surrounding the, the leadership, the forthcoming leadership election and so on, you know, we do not effectively at the moment have an effective opposition. And particularly after the Brexit vote, you know, surely, you know, the, the country, the electorate needs more and should expect more from a valid Labour Party. We have a, an election to leader. It wasn't my choice to have an election to leader, but nevertheless, there is one. And in this campaign, we're not just uh, campaigning on the, who votes in the party election. We're also campaigning on the issues that face the whole country. And so in Cornwall, I'll be talking, obviously, about the issues I've just mentioned, about, uh, about housing and about low wage levels across the, uh, across the county and also the need for a national investment bank which will help provide that vital infrastructure which will develop the new industries and jobs in Cornwall. OK, are you maybe just a bit worried that people are possibly being frightened off by the hard left and momentum? No, I think what we uh, should be frightened of is the philosophy of a free market economy that leaves parts of the country way behind, doesn't invest in the housing that people uh, need, and uh, assumes that uh, somehow or other a low-wage economy is the way forward. It's not. The way forward has to be investment, proper, safe working conditions, and decent wages. That means an end to the grotesque levels of inequality across the whole of Britain. Okay, and thank you so much for your time. Can I just trouble you because um, we've had a couple of questions in from our listeners. Sarah says, um, as Prime Minister, w how would you tackle the mental health crisis in this country? Because she suffers from depression. She's struggling to get help because services have been cut. So, so, Sarah, thank you very much for the question. I believe very, very strongly in real parity of esteem for mental health and physical health within our society. And uh, we have to not only properly fund our mental health services, talking therapies as well as pharmacy type of therapies, uh, in stay places where necessary, but above all we have to change the national attitude towards mental health. Too many people suffer depression. A quarter of us in our lives are going to suffer some form of stress or depression. We reach out to people. We reach out in the language we use, the way we deal with the mental health crisis. I feel absolutely very, very strongly and very, very passionately on this. And therefore, I want to see proper funding for the mental health services, but also a change in our attitudes and understanding that mental health stress does come from many other stresses in society, family breakup, debt, bad housing, trouble at work, but people can and do get through it and can indeed recover and their career op opportunities shouldn't be hampered by this any more than they should be discriminated against because they're going through a mental health crisis. Okay, are you hopeful, Mr Corbyn, you know, that the country can move forward properly after this Brexit vote, which has shattered quite a lot of people? Are you, are you confident and hopeful that the Labour Party can actually effectively pull itself together and, and start uh, speaking for the people? I'm absolutely very confident that uh, we are very much together on an awful lot of the basic issues. Uh, a leadership contest tends to exacerbate differences rather than um, promote the issues that actually unite us, so that we're putting forward. But also, the country as a whole has got to recognize that we, we have a different situation now. The first thing I did after the vote and the referendum was to go to Europe to meet 
fellow socialist parties across Europe to discuss how we can develop a good relationship with them and keep a good relationship with them, keep the benefits we've had from the European Union, such as many of the workers' rights, working time directive and the holiday arrangements, and also, crucially, unless we keep our market access to the rest of Europe, then there's going to be real problems, particularly for Britain's manufacturing industries and, of course, um, agriculture sector, which uh, of which Devon and Cornwall are so very important. Sure. And just one more question from a listener. John Kennedy says, if you lose the leadership election, will you step down as an MP? Well, I'm not contemplating losing the leadership <laughs> election. And I, I've been an MP for my constituency for a very long time. And I'm very happy to continue doing that work. All right, lovely. And finally, do you ever get a weekend off, and especially away from the press? Uh, yeah, occasionally, but it's quite difficult. Um, so either I go cycling somewhere in the country, um, but indeed we're going to have um, uh, a day or two off in the, in the coming week, um, one of which will be in the southwest. And I'm looking forward to that. Oh. I really am looking forward to that. I love cycling in the southwest. Oh, that is absolutely fantastic. Have you done the Camel Trail, uh, Bodmin to Wadebridge, Padstow and all of that? Yes, I did that some time ago with my sons when they were um, a bit younger. And we had a fantastic camp on, uh, on Bodmin one year when I took a group of uh, youngsters from Woodcraft there. And we had an amazing camp on, on, on Bodmin. And uh, I have always have happy memories of everything to do with Devon and Cornwall. When I cross the Tamar, I feel a sense of freedom. Oh, that is absolutely lovely. I hope you get a little bit of downtime here with us this weekend as well. Thank you so much for your time today. Thank you. Thanks right. a lot. Thank you. Bye-bye. Okay. There we are. Bye-bye, Je Jeremy Corbyn. Uh, en route, actually, you could probably hear, I think he was on a, a, tra a train platform there en route down to Cornwall. Um, if you'd like to go and see him, he's at a, a rally in Poole this afternoon. There we go.